Hey, what's up? So I rebuilt the game of Snake as a project and completely automated it using AI, or at least attempted to. Behind me, you can see the running version, but that's not actually using a neural network. That's using a normal uh, plain uh, heuristic. And so let's dive into the code and see how this project went, because it was uh, very interesting to start with and it soon got difficult, but uh, I learned a lot in the process. So let's see. All right, so jumping into the code, the first thing I had to do and get going was basically building Snake, basically building a basic version of a game so that I could um, get the inputs and outputs of it and use that in training the neural network. So using the help of ChatGPT, because that's how you do things these days, <laughs> I built just a basic um, version of Snake here, which I will run first so that you can see what it looks like. That just has a white dot in the middle of the screen representing the player, green dot representing food that increases the player's score when you go and eat it, and a red dot that decreases your score because it's an enemy. So yeah, score zero, now it's one. I'm just using the up and down keys to move the character to, and when I come down and eat, uh, accidentally hit the enemy, we reduce the score by one. And so yeah, that's basically the game. Basic, basic version. And um, the way it works over here is uh, this, this, some, it's just built with Pygame, so there's some screen size, some constants set up here. I've got a dot class to represent the red, white, and red. Um, and then basically just a set of game states and game scores, which are the input and output uh, for the neural network that I'm going to use. Basically the state of the board at any given time, as well as um, the score. Um, I'll talk about the score now now, because that's I think where the project actually went the most awry. But um, I've just got some spawn methods here to add uh, a random position spawn, either the green or red dot, as long as it's an empty position, um, remove the dots when needed, when either the player hits them or it's time to generate a new uh, set of um, enemies and food, um, get the game state, basically return uh, the current state of the board where the red, white and uh, green dots all are on the board, um, then just basically controls for the up and down arrows, um, spawning things at the right spot, some control code. Um, yeah, so the biggest uh, problem that I had in this entire project was basically determining how to get output data um, for the neural network. So input data is easy, it's the current state of the board, but what do you measure as the output data? If this was a deep reinforcement learning project, um, I would just use the pixels of the screen and use the score, scores one and that, and then over time, you know, you would bump into the red dots and be like, hey, that's a very bad move, don't do that. Hey, you hit a green dot, that's a very good uh, move. And so in the future, maybe I think I'd like to do some more reinforcement learning because I recently did OpenAI spinning up an RL course. And so adapting this project to that could be quite interesting. But I mean, this is just like a basic neural network project to learn how to use PyTorch. And so I had to come up with some heuristic, some score um, for determining how good a current game's uh, current board state is. Or basically when the white dot is in the middle there, estimating what the uh, utility or what the um, advantage of going left at a certain position will be or going up or going right or going down and using that to determine what the next move at each time point in the game should be and so i originally started out with like a kind of a complex um a uh, what do you call it not a hypothesis i originally started out with a complex heuristic and um, basically taking the uh, Euclidean distance from the white dot to the green dot and the white dot to the red dot, dividing them and then basically getting a, a function for um, moving closer to green dots and away from red dots. However, there was some very interesting edge cases when, like this, the white dot was on the other side of the red dot and the green dot. So it, was, um, it basically got stuck because the, the white dot would just move like this constantly because it wanted to get closer to the green dot but wouldn't allow itself to get any closer to the red dot. Um, and so I have eventually, I've tried several score uh, functions actually and heuristic functions actually and what I eventually settled on was a basic Euclidean distance from the green dot and just move in that direction at any given time um, and if you're, you're like one away from the red dot don't move in that direction, move in another direction and then move here and then now we can't move down because we're close to the red dot and so basically just uh, like solving for the game of uh, snake very ma in a very manual fashion searching towards the um, the green dot at any given cost, except when you're one away from a red dot. Um, and so yeah, I, I did this as well because I didn't want to play 10,000 games of Snake in order to give the, the neural network training data. And so what I went then and did was in addition to this game code, stop this running here, I had a game generate training data code. And so basically what this was, is it's just the, the same game code I just showed you, but with that score function in place of user input. So at any given spot, it would um, see what the calculate the score 
is and then move in the right direction according to that green heuristic. And so that game went on like this for ages. Um, I think it generated like 10,000 um, instances of training data. At each point, uh, at each time the white dot moves, saving the current game state, calculating the scores and gonna use that as training data for the input uh, to the neural network. And so it worked pretty decently if you ask me in this like, uh, terms of generating uh, training data. But as I, I learned as the project went on, um, you can build the best neural network in the world, but if you've got garbage coming in and garbage outputs, you're gonna have a garbage system. And uh, that's ultimately what happened with the neural network. And um, <laughs> I think maybe one of the operant lessons of this entire project was to say, hey, if you don't need to use machine learning for a problem, don't use it. This is obviously a very easy, simple toy example, but um, here's the game of uh, snakes solved with a basic like Euclidean distance calculation, like you know, how far away are you from the green dot? Move in that direction. If you're about to hit red, don't hit it. Move one to the right or left and then carry on going. That's much simpler than building an entire neural network stack. But of course, this is a very simple example. If there were far more uh, red dots and far more green dots and they were constantly moving and that sort of thing, it would become a much more difficult problem and you wouldn't be able to solve it with simple rules-based calculations. Um, and so that's why the project was initially, you know, based around a neural network. Um, but I'll, let me go over to the neural network and show you how that went, actually. So then I've got a PyTorch game training here, where I load in those game states and game scores, um, convert them into a one-hot uh, PyTorch tensor, because you can't have numbers one, two, and three coming into your neural network. You need to have, you know, zeros, ones, and the values between zero and ones. So I converted my game state um, into a one-hot vector and put it into a training tensor, um, brought in my game scores as my output of the neural network, put together a, a tensor data set. Um, I've never used PyTorch before, I've done stuff on first principles and I've used TensorFlow in the past. Um, so this project was also basically just for me to learn how PyTorch used and I, I really like it, it's a great framework. Um, basic small neural network, I experimented a lot with the, um, the amount of layers and the amount of neurons and that uh, without little success in my last functions. And I think it, it shows the important lesson that um, you can, you can change your model hyperparameters and that as much as you want and your model's um, uh, characteristics and that. But if you've got shit data, it doesn't matter how much you play with the internal um, components of the system, you're not gonna get a functioning system. Um, so yeah, sorry, let me just actually run this while, I, while I'm talking about it. Um, I experimented a lot with my epochs and with my loss function and that. Um, what's going on here? So yeah, I'm just busy training it here in the background. Um, this is basic standard PyTorch code over here, got my neural network, my forward, uh, training function, um, testing. This is actually almost ex exactly from one of the examples. Um, it's nothing, nothing super exciting, plotting the loss curve at the end. These are all the things I tried to get to work better. But if you look down here at the bottom here, we have an initial um, decrease in the loss curve and then a lot of thrashing. It just bumps up and down, which to me tells me the system is not really actually learning. I've got a training here on a subset of the data set at only 20,000 instead of um, 20,000, instead of like the 100,000 um, game states and scores that I collected because it was just taking too long. Um, and ultimately we eventually get this, we get down this loss function to about uh, three, four percent and then it just thrashes around. And when you actually infer it and you play it in the game, uh, it doesn't seem to have learned um, what it's supposed to. It's about to finish now, so I'll show you the loss curve. But um, I think it, it shows that, uh, just what I said, you can mess around with your neural network as much as possible, but if you've got junk data, you're gonna get junk output like this. Um, I got some nice loss curves at one point, but when I brought it over to the inference uh, where I load this model um, and then actually pass it through through the game and run the game instead of like with my manual calculation, um, oh boy. It, you know, it doesn't function at all. It just constantly outputs down in one direction. And I had a look at the output neurons, um, or you can see here down here. They, it's basically minimized the loss function and put all the output neurons around about the same middling value of um, 0.25. This is obviously what uh, minimized the loss function, but it's not actually learning the system. And so I need to experiment a bit more with um, changing the amount of training data I'm using and trying a different um, methodology. I tried several things of uh, different outputs for the neural network, whether I just use one-hearted vectors or I use um, the game scores in a slightly different format than that, all without uh, too much success. And so I think it shows that um, Snake is obviously like a, a more complicated game than like a basic MNIST categorical um, fashion data set neural network, which is the example that I used and trained on. Uh, fun fact, it uh, took me a while to learn that the cross entropy loss was not the right loss function for this um, for this project. And I, I think I used the MSE loss uh, at the very end. Yeah, MSE loss, because um, that worked much better. I actually started getting some decent um, 
some decent outputs for my last function. But basically, um, I think it shows that it's, it's important to have your decent input and output data, else you're just gonna get a junk neural network. And it, I think it shows the importance also that your, your neural network can be as complicated as you want, but if like the underlying problem um, isn't as easy to model um, in the neural network as you think it might be, you're gonna have problems no matter how good you are. And I think it also shows that I'm not as um, clued up about um, neural networks and AI as I, I thought I uh, was. I'm gonna continue learning and continue playing with this and uh, I'm gonna do a couple other projects soon and, and I'm gonna host this on a, um, like a Google Cloud Run server and that's just to practice the whole development pipeline of my AI skills. But um, I, mean, I built that neural network for Varsity um, from scratch, from first principles, but it was like more than a year ago now. And so obviously you're looking a bit rusty. Um, but even then with that project, I remember with my cl close, ha uh, close and opening of hand, like classifier and that, it's all about your training data. So in conclusion, um, task failed successfully, I guess. Uh, I automated the game of Snake, which was the original outcome. And I learned about PyTorch and how to do some basic neural networks using a new framework that I hadn't used before. But the actual neural network um, training was like unsuccessful in terms of like the neural network never actually learned how to approximate my heuristic function properly. And that could be both as a result of me not understanding the inputs and outputs of the neural network properly and not setting up my environment properly. Because um, much easier to just do a classification or regression problem where your input and output data is like pre-collected for you, whether it's images or uh, extracted from a data set and cleaned properly in there, as opposed to building a live environment like this and trying to plug it in straight away. But valuable learning experience and I think super cool. And yeah, in conclusion, uh, good input and output data is the most important part of neural networks, um, especially when they're smaller toy problems like this, as opposed to like a large language model on that, which has so much scale that um, a lot of junk data doesn't corrupt it and it's still teaching it its internal worldview. So yeah, um, task failed successfully. I'm going to carry on building some more AI projects to increase my learning and uh, I'll give updates on Twitter if I manage to get this working um, in the traditional neural network sense. But um, it's on score 4,780 at the moment, so not too bad. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.